Hello and welcome to the show. My guest today is a professor of German at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. It is Dr. Eric Jarosinski, or Jarosinski, I should say straight away. He's also very active on Twitter. Indeed, he's most probably better known by his Twitter name, Nine Quarterly. Nine, incidentally, not the number, but the German word for no. And by that, I don't mean no, as in to know someone, but no, as in yes. Confused? Well, stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Um, let's clear up that name straight okay. away. Um, why is that your Twitter handle? Well, let's see. Um, I think partially it's because uh, what uh, I'm largely interested in doing on, on Twitter is about um, uh, really articulating a voice that is sort of a grumpy, misanthropic kind of voice um, who says nine to a great many things, dislikes a great many things, dislikes Twitter even uh, uh, most of the time. Um, but in doing so, I think, uh, is trying really to say yes to something else. Um, and uh, you'll probably ask soon about the, the rest of the name, which is, uh, this is a yeah. compendium of utopian negation, Let's right? Let's go um, straight there. Yes, what's a that's compendium? That's largely what this is. It's, uh, I'm interested in um, working with uh, a fair number of cliches, marketing slogans, uh, uh, language from advertising, etc., cetera, um, and taking a lot of things that um, would give us a certain yes uh, to this is the good life or this is what you want and saying no to that, that, well, maybe you want something else. Um, but you don't seem very grumpy. You have a big smile. Uh, I can't help it. I'm from the Midwest uh, in the United States. We're supposedly nice people. Uh, of course, if you know us better, you'll just know that we're very politic uh, people. Um, but, uh, well, there's a difference between uh, myself and, 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 and this character uh, that I've developed, this voice I've developed. Um, but uh, over time, I've realized that there's a fair amount of overlap as well. Is it, is it very definitely a character then? It's not, I mean, are you an actor on Twitter, so to speak? Well, maybe I'm here as an actor. <laughs> Maybe I actually do have a monocle, yes. and I've only put on my my, my glasses for today. Yeah. Um, well, uh, in a way, or at least that's that's maybe how it started. Um, uh, the the short version of a long story about the origin of this is really that. Uh, I was trying to write an academic book that uh, I was having real difficulty writing. And it was largely because I was frustrated with the language of, of uh, academia. I was uh, somewhat frustrated with uh, a topic that I've been working with for many years. Um, and I found myself really unable to write. And uh, Writer's block. Well, <laughs> so resort to Twitter with 140 characters. Somehow Block is putting it mildly. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what, what term I would use, except that um, it, was, it was in a way connected to a great deal of anxiety. I'm an anxious person, actually. And there was a, a way in which Twitter and, and, and developing this other voice um, was a way to talk about the things I wanted to talk about and that I care about and spend a great deal of time uh, learning about. Um, but I could do so in an irreverent way, in a playful way, and I think ultimately uh, I've come to the conclusion in a way that's really more in the spirit of the type of critical thinkers uh, I'm interested in. Before we get to the irreverence, yes. um, I just want to clear up, you mentioned the monocle. Yes. This is your avatar. Mm -hmm. And um, this, uh, well, tell us. <laughs> about this. This was designed by somebody here in Germany, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Lucas de Groot, uh, uh, a graphic Sounds designer. Dutch. and Yes, in Dutch. Um, say, uh, uh, a company called Fontfabrik uh, in, in Berlin, um, type designer. Um, and this came about, as, as, as many things have, um, uh, I have a number of followers who have been very generous, very supportive of what it is that I've been doing, and they've, they've pitched in in various ways, uh, large and small. Um, and uh, what this is, is a cartoon version of one of the philosophers I've worked on for some time. Uh, this is Theodor V. Adorno. Uh, and he's, of course, most known for uh, his work um, on the Enlightenment, on reason, on uh, the culture industry is the term that, that he coined together with Max Horkheimer. Uh, did, he, did he actually have a monocle? He did not. He did not. That is really putting my own stamp on this because um, uh, while he um, 
uh, in, 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 in many ways is, is, is very engaged with, 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 with popular culture. Um, and much of his, his work really is, is, is about that and about sort of the politics of, of, of pop culture. Um, he's often vilified for being, um, uh, I guess the term that would be used today is being very elitist. Um, and uh, <clears throat> in a way, I, I wanted to play that up really with this monocle of, of sort of um, aristocratic Adorno. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really a way of, uh, for me, <clears throat> on one hand, speaking to um, a certain perception of this thinker, but also for me, it's a way to comment on uh, sort of the, the, the industry that's grown up around him uh, and the sort of cultural capital that's associated with him. And uh, that's part of what made uh, my own work somewhat difficult, um, uh, was uh, much of the, the institutional um, uh, context of working on thinkers like this. Um, and I, I really wanted to return to the things that, that, that first drew me to him, which were uh, and You, you keep voice. a lot of humour in it. Um, and, yeah. and, and you've got to change, actually, I think, 60,000 followers now on Twitter. Um, and how many are they, how many of them are German? Uh, that's a good question. It's really hard to figure out. Uh, there are <clears throat> only some very sort of crude tools for, 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 for um, determining that. Uh, I think roughly maybe um, a third, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's time, we should um, straight away, yeah, here's one. This is... Um, one of your aphorisms on, on Twitter, if we can see this one. If you could read that out to us, I don't know whether they... Ah, they can see it now on the, the screen. In English, war is hell. In German, hell is a summit sunny day. We should explain that a little bit. But... Uh, well, <laughs> simply, <clears throat> this, is, this is hell, of course, one of those, those, those German words that uh, is a, uh, a false friend uh, in that hell in, in, in German means bright, right, or clear. Um, and uh, uh, there are plenty of examples of, of, of uh, odd contexts in which it will show up. One of my favorites is uh, seeing a, 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 a light muffin at some point. It was called Muffin Hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but... I've got one for you, actually. That I, I took a photograph this very morning because I go past mm -hmm. this every day and it amuses me and will amuse English speakers. But, of course, this is a, a, a sign for an interior decorator near my house, <laughs> hell living. Um, uh, I which, think they did my house. You know, he's not going to get many jobs in, in the English-speaking world, but, I mean, I'm sure, he's, I'm sure he's terribly good, really. And, of course, this hell is beer. Yes, it, well, oh, Which is a, a lager, I think. Yes, you know. yes. Now, talking about tweeting, how many, do you, how many tweets do you write every day? Uh... That's a number I wouldn't want to admit to myself, uh, let alone uh, to, to, to an audience. Um, I would say that it, 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 <clears throat> it varies a lot. Um, it could be as many as um, 50 to 100, perhaps. Um, I, would, I would say that at the same time, many of those, many of those are, are, are erased at the end of the day. Um, okay. Well, well we, we were very curious about where you do your tweeting because mm -hmm. there is so many. So mm -hmm. we asked Dr. Eric to quickly <laughs> make some film on his smartphone before he flew over from Philadelphia. So a world exclusive <clears throat> here, behind the scenes of Nine Quarterly. Um, and Eric, you haven't seen this yourself no, yet. I so if, I'm afraid this is spontaneous. Can you talk us through this? Roll film. Well, you see some rather avant-garde filmmaking technique here. Uh, this is me at a bus stop, waiting for a bus with time, time to kill, as it were. It arrives, and this is the scene for much of my, my writing, is in fact in transit. Um, I find that to be one of the most productive times, actually, trains waiting for anything. This is me simply walking through my neighborhood in South Philadelphia. Um, Do you actually tweet when you're walking through the night? You know, I've become one of those people, yes. Uh, and it's, uh, it's dangerous. Um, it, it really is. Sometimes that, that, that next joke about Hegel is more important than looking before you cross the street. This is my office at the university. Look how dark it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually spend much time there. I don't write tweets there, for sure. Um, oh, finally, where's this? This is New York. I split my time between New York and Philadelphia. Uh, oh, I, have, I have, I have, I have a nice view there. Yeah. Um, but that's, uh, but essentially to ask, answer your question, um, 
I tweet most, most, most anywhere, but that's also sort of the explanation for, uh, in a way, why I'm doing this is that, um, or why I'm able to do it is, um, I don't know if I've ever written a tweet on my laptop, for instance, if it weren't for the smartphone, uh, I would never have started this um, because why, what I like about it is that um, it is sort of an ongoing conversation with uh, your everyday life, uh, with something that you see that, that, uh, that, that inspires you in some way or that you recognize some joke in or whatever it happens to be. But is it a lonely existence? <laughs> or, or do you actually interact with a lot of your... Uh, I certainly interact, but, it's, but it is both lonely and not lonely. Uh, I mean, the internet is all about paradoxes. Uh, you don't need a professor in a, in a tie to, 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 to explain that. I mean, I think we, 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 we all know this. Um, but for me, it's the, um, the most intensively I've experienced that paradox of being uh, uh, somehow part of a community together in some way, but everyone separately. Um, and uh, there's... there's uh, Actually, that's one of the one of the things I, I write about a fair amount in in, in in my jokes about Twitter. It's essentially ways in which uh, sometimes social media succeeds in filling that emptiness it's created in our lives, uh, and I think that there's there's something to that. Um, yeah, yeah. That yeah. there is a type of community, but um, you also have to ask yourself what what type of community is being lost at the same time. Mm. Let me. Um mention another tweet, not, uh, not on the, the uh -huh. uh, iPad there. Uh -huh. Until there is truth, until there is beauty, it's one I particularly like, at least there is German grammar. Because <laughs> yes. I've been struggling with German yeah, grammar yeah. for the last 20 years. I That's mean, what it's for. How did you actually, how did your interest start in the German language? Uh, coincidence more than anything. Um, I grew up in a tiny little town, uh, very remote uh, in, in uh, Wisconsin. Uh, in fact, if you Google my hometown of Park Falls, Wisconsin, you'll see that it is also described as being one of the most remote towns in, in this very uh, rural part of the state. We actually have a map of it. You do? Yeah, All right. yeah we do. All Park right. Falls, Wisconsin okay. will, will be shown to All right. the world. All right. I will so put how you, remote is it? Well, uh, I think it got its first stoplights maybe 10 years ago, uh, two of them. I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they might have caused accidents when they were, when they were first installed uh, in, in familiarity with them. Um, but it's uh, you know, the kind of place where you have to travel uh, uh, two or three hours to the nearest shopping mall. Um, it's, no. uh, really? Yeah, this is possible. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. you learned German? No. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. No, <laughs> this is why. Yeah. Well, uh, this, is, this is how chance came in, is that um, there was a student in my high school uh, who had spent a year in Germany in Kassel, uh, uh, right outside of Kassel, Baunetal. And she returned and spoke of the great wide world beyond. And uh, as things happened, we fell madly in love and uh, were together for many years. Oh, I see. It's and love, much of the plan, this has guided far too many of my decisions in life, but uh, many of them have worked out. Oh, there's nothing better than to guide such decisions. Uh, exactly. But I, I believe people are learning German uh -huh. from, your, from nine quarters. They're learning a type of German. They are learning question. a type yeah. of German. Um, the, a fair number of people, though, I, I've realized uh, when things are written in German, and I do mainly write in English. Um, but uh, when I when I write more in German, and I do that more when I'm when I'm when I'm in Germany, um, a number of people run this through Google Translate, for instance. Uh, they uh, it's always curious to see what they what they come out with, uh, because largely uh, I am playing with some aspect of the language, and uh, those things uh, obviously don't translate so well. Mm. Now, you're what we haven't told our audience, but I'm going to now. You're leaving, mm -hmm. I believe, a secure job as a professor at a university in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. to dive into the unknown? Why? <laughs> uh, why? Uh, in a way, to leave the unknown. Um, uh, yes, uh, secure existence, I suppose, maybe. Um, but, you know, you're also talking to uh, an academic uh, who is having real difficulty writing. Uh, real difficulty, real difficulty doing his research. Uh, I was at a research university, still am, for uh, a few more weeks at least, and that's your job. I mean, I teach clearly, um, but uh, institutions like this are about um, producing uh, uh, any number of publications, books, articles, etc. And if you have trouble writing, 
uh, well, you won't, you won't be sticking around there very long. Um, so uh, this wasn't simply a rash decision. I mean, uh, certainly the, the writing was very much on the wall uh, mm -hmm. for me. And uh, if, if, if anything, though, um, I found that uh, I've greatly uh, benefited from the experience from my years uh, at the university. And I think that that's a lot of what I do comes from that experience as well. Um, certainly, uh, 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 many people who follow are academics. Um, and uh, there are a number of things that I write that are really for other academics, so very, in, very much inside jokes along those lines. So, okay. um, so in a way, uh, yes, I'm uh, 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 departing, but um, uh, on to bigger and better things in many ways. Yeah, well, well we, we were looking for a report that might help mm -hmm. you. It's not easy to turn mm -hmm. tweets mm -hmm. into money, but mm -hmm. here's a German woman who says Twitter has actually been good for business. In just a few minutes, she draws people that she's never even seen before. Michaela von Eichberger only knows them through Twitter, the online forum. She transforms strangers' tweets of 140 characters or less into pictures. Then she takes a photograph and posts it on Twitter. Sometimes she writes tweets about whatever moves her. Just one or two sentences, like playing ping pong with your thoughts. These small, spontaneous drawings are often freely associated with the pseudonyms chosen by those depicted in her Twitter portraits. She follows the entries posted by nearly 1,000 people who have Twitter profiles. It provides her with a seemingly inexhaustible source of creative energy. I always keep an eye on Twitter. I can't even calculate the hours I spend doing it anymore. So it's better not to ask. It certainly has an addictive potential. Someone even wrote about it. For heaven's sake, it's a horrible drug, but it's fun. So you really get addicted to it. But Twitter is also about opportunity. Michaela has long become a star on the scene. Her agency has got commissions from it and four galleries invited her to exhibit her drawings. That gave her the chance to finally get to know some of her Twitter friends in real life. <laughs> the first exhibition was held at a gallery in Nuremberg. Michaela met the real people behind the drawings. And she could check to see how well she hit the mark. One Twitter user came from Berlin. When something you care about hurts, then it's real. And that's what I drew. It's an honor to see it online. Michaela von Eichberger's drawings from the Twitter world made their real world debut. And of course, they gave Twitter users something to talk about. Naturally, those users instantly posted their impressions of the exhibition for the whole world to see. Now, normally on the show, we have a prize draw where we give something away. Now, Nine Quarterly is all about negation. So this week, Eric has kindly agreed to donate nothing as a prize. <laughs> so write to us at insight at dw.de, and we will then pick a winner who will perceive, receive even precisely nothing. But it will be nothing <laughs> from my guest. <laughs> Dr. Eric. It's going to cost a fortune to mail. There's a lot of nothing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could get some tweets there. <laughs> right. Um, uh, you're out in the real world. Do you uh, like meeting your fans or have you met any of your fans? Uh, yes, I've met several, actually. It's... Right. Um, and uh, uh, some people I've known um, from real life uh, and then they start to follow me, although that's really a, a very small number. Um, but yes, in fact, it's one of the uh, most exciting things about, about this for me has been, um, even when I had many, uh, oh, far fewer fa followers, um, they were so spread out uh, around the world that um, anywhere uh, I would go, um, I know that there's somebody there who follows this thing. And um, uh, I might meet with them or simply get some restaurant tips, uh, find out what, what, you know, what bar to go to or... Uh, 
uh, any number of, 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 of ways in which um, there's that local knowledge that's it's so interesting, valuable, changes your experience of a place. Um, so, you know, I've met uh, a good number of them. I'll meet some uh, when I'm uh, traveling around now a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, it's one of the fun things about it. We're talking before um, that report about, you know, you're giving up your job mm -hmm. and I, you want to be a professional aphorist, mm -hmm. somebody who writes... Uh, perhaps sayings or witticisms. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, do you mind me asking, how, how do you think you're going to make a living? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. I mean, uh, well, this is something I'm still figuring out at the moment, but um, I've got a good start. Uh, I Nine Quarterly now runs as a weekly column uh, in the German newspaper Die Zeit. Um, and that's, that's been for like the last five, six weeks at this point. And um, it's an experiment, uh, essentially taking this, this new- is, I should just say, this yeah. is a, a highly regarded, if not the best sort of German weekly newspaper, well, Die Zeit. Well, yeah. well, now it is uh, for the last five or six weeks. Yeah, since uh, you've been <laughs> doing your column. But it's, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's one of those papers that I, um, uh, I've spent uh, uh, a great deal of time reading in the past, um, a great deal of time looking up words <laughs> uh, because the German is sometimes complicated uh, for me. It certainly was in the past um, in a publication like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the, um, so there's that that's already, that's already begun. Um, I've actually started writing somewhat longer pieces now. Um, I've done some things recently for the Frankfurt Allgemeine, uh, 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 which again, um, very highly regarded German newspaper. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's a real interest in um, an American perspective uh, on Germany um, from an American who spent a great deal of time here and uh, who has the language, um, who uh, has friends here, has a rather different perspective than uh, what you'll get from um, uh, some other figures perhaps in, in, in politics, business, et cetera, who uh, drop in and are on the way out again after a short amount of time. Um, and uh, I think that, that, that what people have appreciated has been that sort of in-between position that I occupy. And uh, that's really uh, what it is that I love most about um, uh, uh, what it is that, that, that I uh, have been doing over the last years, of really living between these cultures. Um, uh, yeah, we're talk talking of that actually. Yeah. I'd like to show start show a few pictures now. This, this first one, this is um, your entry into Bonn University, mm -hmm. I, I believe. But mm -hmm. this, I do know because you told me beforehand <laughs> that your first experience in in <laughs> Germany in Bonn was being locked in the university. Yeah, it was not because of anything I did uh, necessarily, but uh, it was. I uh, wanted to look at the main university building, this rather ornate uh, uh, palace, essentially, uh, on a Saturday. And um, I went in with my girlfriend at the time, and we uh, walked in, and we went to leave a few minutes later, and we were locked inside of this building. And it turns out there was an alarm that went off 15 minutes before they closed, but we came in somehow after the alarm. Uh, and uh, it made for uh, some harrowing... Uh, uh, moments. Um, he had to call the police, uh, hang outside of the window, essentially to signal where we were. How did you call the police? We yeah. found the one, the one public telephone in that That's building. Yeah. Um, this yeah. is before the days that everyone had a, a cell phone with them, yeah. a mobile phone. With them. But it didn't put you off. You studied in Bonn. Um, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, and uh, you studied in a number of places and even taught in Freiburg, I mm -hmm. know. But uh, um, mm -hmm. another picture now of, of the city we're in now, Berlin, because you've actually, you've lived here for quite a time mm -hmm. too. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> it's funny. That's a picture uh, from, I believe it was 1991, 1992. Uh, that was my, <clears throat> my first trip to, to Berlin, standing there with a couple of friends of mine, uh, Marx and Engels. Um, <clears throat> Marx is actually someone I teach uh, a lot, actually, uh, in the university. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that was my first trip. It was an exciting time to, to be here. Um, I mean, much of my, my experience of Germany has been really post-wall Germany. Uh, of my very first trip, I think 1990, um, until the present. And so it's been a really fascinating place to be uh, for those years. Mm. Now, we're about halfway through the show now, and you haven't been able to Twitter 
Is, mm-hmm. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, actually. Uh, <laughs> people often will say that, but uh, no, I, uh, uh, I'm careful about that. It's, uh, it's actually something I've had to learn to be careful about. Um, Could uh, you get addicted, do you think? To oh, it? sure, of course. I mean, yeah. a, the reason I mention it, not uh-huh. specifically for you, but there's a lot of talk, isn't there, at the moment mm-hmm. about social media. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, Twitter hasn't been denigrated much, but, I mean, mm-hmm. Facebook is being, I mean, mm-hmm. and, and stuff. Um, yeah, well, I like to say it's not an addiction. It's a, it's just a rather frequent light motif. Uh, <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, no, I think it certainly has that potential. Um, I'm sure that I probably am addicted in some manner. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's also what's made it possible to continue doing it, is that um, I've been able to, to find a way in which... Um, it, it fills moments that would otherwise um, not necessarily be spent doing something else. Mm. Um, a lot of it is sort of an internal monologue, which now finds its way uh, onto the internet. But um, no, in lots of ways, I have a relationship that means a lot to me. And uh, when we're together, um, I, uh, uh, I never tweet. Um, it's, uh, that would certainly get in the way of, 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 of a healthy relationship, I mm. think. I'm trying to find one of... Ah, I think that's it. I'm trying to find another tweet, though, now. I think it's time for another tweet. Okay. Um, If we can put this one... This one is um, a gentle reminder that there is most certainly a German sense of humour. It is, however... Commonly mistaken for aesthetic <laughs> theory. What are you trying to say? Uh, uh, that one is open to interpretation, I suppose. Um, except to say that... Uh, I guess another other quip about... about uh, German humor is that it just doesn't translate, uh, especially into German. Um, but it's, uh, but that of course is all unfair. Um, but that's a lot of what I do really is to exaggerate, uh, cliches, exaggerate various stereotypes. Um, and, uh, that's something I very much enjoy doing, um, in that, it's a way to, in which you can uh, explore those things, uh, make fun of things, but do so in a very accessible way. Mm, um, mm. And also how one do, that, I, that I just enjoy. How do uh, Germans react to your obs- observations? Do they react differently to other people? I mean, I, I, I've, I've read that you said Germans have a different way of reading Twitter. Uh, yes, uh, that's been my, my sense anyway. And... Um, this relates to your question about how much I write uh, per day. I said it'd actually be much better for me if I wrote less. Um, uh, to stick with my account, um, you have to be committed to it because you'll see a lot of it. And uh, I can understand how that could be frustrating for some people. Um, but I think that for my German followers in particular, the sense that I have is that one uh, has a greater sense of, of duty, obligation to read every tweet that happens to be uh, in one's uh, timeline. Um, and especially with the time difference, um, if, if when you wake up in the morning, uh, you're going to find everything that I had written the, the, the night before, essentially. Um, and uh, uh, that can be a bit much, I think, mm. uh, at one go. And so uh, I frequently receive the complaint that... Um, uh, I like what you write, but there's simply too much of it. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with it. Um, and I understand <clears throat> it. I mean, it's, uh, um, but, but largely I have to say, um, I mean, German followers have shown uh, really that they, they get a joke and, and they have a sense of humor about themselves. And, and was it a German follower who said, I know you get sent <laughs> with your avatar, so right. that it's a Photoshop, this, we have yes, to say. Yes, yes, This is, um, well, you tell us who this is. Uh, f- uh, well, one of the uh, uh, best-known philosophers of our day, Slavoj Žižek, uh, and this is, um, this is a, a picture, I think, actually, uh, my logo, my nine here, is taking the place of a, of a poster of Stalin, which is actually the... the, uh, the and the, uh, But the, I rather like, I don't know whether... I hope people can see this. There's the coffee cup as yes, well. Yes, well, <clears throat> you might not know this, but I, but I did uh, I did go into some merchandising for a few weeks. Um, <laughs> I did. Um, really? Yes, ah. yes. I, uh, I, le- <clears throat> I left the business, however. It was, uh, it was a little experiment. It was something that... People liked, uh, uh, sold a few things. You don't make much money, but it was, but it was fun. Um, but uh, after a while, I, I, I just um, decided uh, it wasn't really for me, at least not for now. Um, 
because, you know, as much as what I do is uh, just, you know, these silly little jokes or, you know, you can call them aphorisms if you like, but um, I think of it as writing jokes. Um, it also means a great deal to me. I mean, it came along at a time in my life in which things are very difficult. And uh, this is also now, um, you know, to try to avoid a few cliches, but actually making a, a new life possible. Um, and uh, so to me, it does mean something. And the experiences that I've had on it have been meaningful. And so there are ways in which I'm cautious myself about cheapening the experience. So that was, that was, in the end... Um, I'd like a coffee cup. I don't think that's cheap. Well, right, well <laughs> right now they're collector's items because I've, there aren't many out there. There, oh, there aren't right. many out there. You heard it here first. Yes. Now, my guest is Eric Jarosinski, who's amusing his Twitter followers with intellectual aphorisms or jokes, as he says, <laughs> on Germany and the German language. Now, the author Franz Kafka wasn't exactly thought of as being funny or indeed light, but one literary institution here in Germany has been trying to change that. I wonder what you think of that. Is it dumbing down? Kafka, you're an intellectual, you're a professor <laughs> of German at a university. Uh, is it dumbing him down or is it making him more accessible? Well, I think actually Kafka's funny without uh, uh, comics. Uh, Kafka is hilarious in many ways. It's, I mean, it's a very dark comedy, but it's, but it's comedy. Um, if you think about it, um, uh, the fact that Kafka, that uh, Gregor Samsa awakes, uh, you know, one morning um, as, as, as this, this, this giant uh, 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 monstrous vermin uh, and his first thought is, how do I get to work? Right. Uh, there's something tragically funny about that. And to me, that's that's the type of humor that that I appreciate. And uh, there's something isn't nothing is funny for me unless it also acknowledges really um, how sad it all is. Yeah, I, I guess reading your Twitter feed, you know, it's that's quite clear. Yeah. <laughs> really. um, uh, one thing I wanted to mention when in doubt, umlaut. Yes. Um, now, we have to explain mm -hmm. the umlaut is the two dots above all the vowels? No, some of the vowels. Yeah. Um, that change the, 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 the sound of the word, really. Mm -hmm. That make, if you, put, if you have it above a, a, a U, it's U. Mm -hmm. um, if it's above an A, it's, oh, E. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's sounds that English speakers don't really have. That's no. right, yeah. Um, it's, uh, I guess what interests is, interests me about it, uh, for one thing, is, yes, it's something unique. Of course, uh, Turkish has umlauts as well, even many more than, uh, are used even more frequently uh, than in German. Uh, many of my Turkish followers have, 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 have told me this. Um, but also it's uh, graphically interesting. I mean, the, the, the U umlaut in particular. Um, I mean, something that uh, I very much like about Twitter is just seeing... Um, you know, you just have a little bit of text in front of you, but you start to look at that text differently. And um, certainly, uh, I'm not the first to realize this, uh, but, you know, a U umlaut is, is, is an interesting little, cute little smiley, right? And you look at it from a certain perspective, right? Uh, this, I'm just realizing this would really, what you just said would really upset the heavy metal community, well, wouldn't it? Well, because they, they prefer this, the O this umlaut. This is a smiley, you Yeah, know? so they <gasps> prefer the O umlaut, but for me the O umlaut is actually an expression of, of shock or surprise. Uh, in fact, one of my favorite bits of, of, of shtick to do is that of uh, German emoticons, uh, which are typically uh, umlauted vowels. Um, but it's... Uh, so does that explain why bands like Motorhead, Blue Oyster Cult, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of others. Motley Crue. Motley Crue. It's, fun if, you the try, umlaut, it's fun if you try to pronounce them with the umlaut, actually. Um, but the Motley, <laughs> Motley Crue. You end up with something rather unusual. Um, it has a history. Um, uh, Wikipedia has a, an entry on the heavy metal umlaut, uh, which is which is worth uh, reading. Um, it's it's interesting, I and mean, it's a signifier of so many things. It's really a complex signifier of uh, one associates. Uh, Germanness somehow with that, and that uh, has a whole range of other associations as well. In particular, you know the questions of typeface, etc. Um, I think largely, though, what it does is that 
um, it at least connotes some sense of, 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 of gravitas, of weight, uh, in some ways of a type of seriousness, earnestness of some sort. Um, that then uh, can be exaggerated in the case of, say, uh, heavy metal um, uh, uh, that's sort of playing on a certain darkness, right? Um, and, and in others, uh, what I like to do with it is really to, to both have it present and not. Uh, and that's what I like about an, uh, an u-umlaut of, of this thing that you might associate with um, much of, of, of the gloom and doom that, I, that, 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 that fills uh, my tweets. But at the same time, you know, it's a smiley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough of German grammar. Um, I want... Uh, this is a photo you took in Philadelphia, perhaps? Yeah, actually, well, this is one that someone sent me, but it's uh, taken oh, in Philadelphia. Sorry. Uh, um, that's right. And it's... Um, uh, but this shows up a lot in Philadelphia recently, and it's not my work. I will, I will add that. What, the same uh, thing? I believe in Werner Herzog. Yes, Oh, yes. it's not... Oh, I see. It's become, it's become something of a, of a motif, but I think always the same, the same uh, 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 person's behind it. I recognize the, 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 the penmanship there. Um, but Werner Herzog has become, uh, certainly uh, has been, and, and become even more of a cult figure uh, in the United States in a certain... A uh, certain scene, and um, there is uh, some of some of that, which uh, uh, I think also comes from the fact that uh, his voice is so important in what he does. His perspective, um, sort of this hyper rational, in a way, uh, uh, perspective, um, yet at the same time, uh, a hyper rational dreamer of some sort. Uh, who has uh, a certain vision and is obsessed by things. And I think that he embodies many of the contradictions that I'm interested in exploring in what, what I do online. I want to sort of finally broaden that out a bit from Werner Herzog, that, that picture in, in, in Philadelphia. Um, on the popularity or unpopularity, or how is Germany mm -hmm. perceived? I mean, you're an exception as a guest, actually, because mm -hmm. normally our guests live here permanently. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wonder if you finally could tell us what, how do you think it, Germany is perceived today in mm -hmm. middle America? If you yeah, know. well, interesting. Um, right now, uh, I think that, that in, in some ways, many of the old cliches might live on. Um, much of the, the image of, of Germany has been shaped um, by tourism. Uh, uh, Bavaria is usually what people think of immediately. Uh, of course, people associate uh, German uh, Germans history of course the Nazi period still lives on in people's in people's memories uh, as it should uh, but it's certainly not the um, uh, uh, the only uh, aspect that, that people think about now um, but I think what's what's happened largely has been that much of of the culture that's grown up um, around Berlin, of course, that has been here for some time, but that has been um, discovered uh, in more recent decades uh, by Americans, the British, etc. cetera, um, that that has also made its way back into uh, American culture. Um, and that there is something about that kind of um, Berlin scene that has been replacing, I think, many of the older uh, cliches about, about Germany and the US. Dr. Eric Jarosinski, it's been fascinating to talk to you. Good luck Thank with you all your much. writing. Look out for him on Nine Quarterly. Don't forget also to write to us at insight at dw.de. This week you can win absolutely nothing but <laughs> from Dr. Eric Jarosinski, who's been my guest on Insight Germany this week. Thanks for watching. Join us again at uh, the same time next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>